you know, they were drinking tea and talking and stuff. And all of a sudden, they started to raise their voice. And so she said, honey, everything is okay. He said, fine. And uh, she said, I was about to call the police. What is, what is going on? Were you fighting or something? He said, no, no, no. We're just talking about the weather. Like, but this is how we talk. We just raise our voice. And, you know, but, but this is the culture. We just raise our voice, right? We do the same thing in Egypt. We just raise our voice for no reason. So you're talking to someone in front of you, and people like a mile away, they can hear them. This is part of the culture, right? So all these small differences sometimes make the marriage unstable. But again, if the love is there, mawadda wa rahma, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the foundations for the successful marriage. Uh, uh, the next point is about age difference. Personally, uh, I think it's good if both are close to each other in uh, age. If there is a, an age difference, I prefer if the brother is a little bit older, one up to five years. This is what I think. If the sister is older than the brother, because biologically speaking, physically speaking, the sisters grow uh, faster than the brothers, right? Uh, this is science here. I'm not making things up. So. A lot of people, they prefer if they marry someone younger, especially uh, younger sister, sisters, uh, because this is what they think the right thing to do, or at least from an Arab culture perspective. I don't know how they do it in India, Pakistan, and other places. Uh, but this does not necessarily mean if people have a very wide uh, age difference, uh, the marriage is not going to succeed. Because as I said, uh, Khadija radiallahu was 15 years, older to the Prophet and they lived uh, happily together for 25 years. However, uh, if you look at the case of Fatima radiallahu anha, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu proposed to Fatima. Uh, there was a huge age, age difference, and this is an authentic hadith, and the Prophet refused. Uh, then I think Omar proposed. There was a huge age difference. He refused. When Ali radiallahu proposed, they were about the same age, he gave her to him in marriage because he realized she's going to be happier with him because he's closer to her age, right? So I, I thought this is a very uh, interesting point. Uh, some even say that the Prophet told him, uh, I think my daughter would prefer if you don't marry another wife. So they agreed at the time, I'm not sure if the hadith is authentic or no, uh, at the time of the marriage that he's not going to marry another one, right? And this is why after uh, Fatima radiallahu passed away, Ali radiallahu got married uh, again, or I think he got married to more than one. Uh, so the sisters have the right to put their in this in their marriage contract. This is your right to put in the marriage contract. You are not allowed to marry another wife, right? Since we are here in Canada, we go by the law of the land, but just in case you get married at home, this is your right, but you don't have to. If, if you have this right, it doesn't mean you should use it. But in some cases, uh, it's up to the sister to put something like this in her contract that uh, you, sh you are not allowed to marry another wife. This is your right to request this in the marriage contract. Uh, Allahu Akbar. I think we should leave now and give you some time for questions. And there's a third part we can talk about next time, inshallah. Uh, questions? If he breaks this contract, does that mean that the talaq is not the talaq is actually happen? If the husband doesn't practice? Yeah, no, like if, if, he, if he marries another wife and, and she put it that in the contract. Yes, happen. she has the right to ask for divorce because he, uh, he violated the condition in the contract. This is one of the things that the sisters don't know about, that she has the right to put something like this in her marriage contract. Yeah. I know the brothers are mad now. Is there any permission to marry something? Uh, can we turn off the camera? <laughs> because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> turn it off. You should? Yeah. We'll cut it off. Okay. Uh, في قاعدة في الفقه بتقول من لا يشترط English. If someone's permission is not required, their knowledge is not required either. 
So which means uh, the husband religiously, technically, does not have to ask for permission from his wife to get married to another lady. It, he doesn't have to ask unless she put it in the contract, right? But he has a moral and ethical obligation to tell his wife. So there's no obli religious obligation, but there's a moral obligation to tell his wife. Uh, otherwise, if, if she finds out from someone else or through someone else, uh, he will be in trouble, big time. Yeah. We use this example for Hajj for the wife. Say for example, do you, if, if you are going for Hajj, do you have to take your wife with you? Do you have to pay for the Hajj? Well, Islamically, you don't have to, right? Because if she doesn't have money, she doesn't have to go, right? The husband's obligations towards the wife include uh, housing and food and, and uh, water, providing for the family and clo clothing and all these things. That's it. If she falls sick, you have to, you know, to buy her medicine, take to her to the hospital, but you don't have to pay for the Hajj. You don't have a religious obligation, but you have a moral and ethical obligation to take her with you, right? Because she has been serving you in the family, so you have this obligation to take her with you. Because what is the point if you go for the Hajj by yourself, and when you come back she's going to call you a traitor, you don't love me, and all these things, and you get the title Hajji, but two weeks later you get the title of Marhum, deceased. What is the point, you know? Choke. Oh, he died peacefully in his sleep. They don't know. This is what they always say in the paper, you know. Yes? Um, how to make the vows accept interracial marriage? Well, like the, the head of the family and the father. Some fa some, in some cultures, they are open to it, right? Uh, I'm not going to name countries, but some. Some countries are very conservative, the cultures are very conservative, they are not open to the idea, but some are open. So you know your family, if they are open to the idea or no. Uh, there was a recent case, I'm not going to mention names, the brother was desperate, he's from a culture, uh, the sister he was interested in was from another culture, and it took me about four months to convince the two families to let them get married. And eventually, about a month, two or three weeks ago, alhamdulillah, we did their nikah, right? But I was able to convince them, and both of them were very good people, mashallah. And the two families are good, but they were scared because of the difference of culture. And although I think both of them were born and raised here, and no chances of them going back to their, their country. They were going to live here most likely for the rest of their lives. So I was able to convince them. Uh, so I think uh, you know your family better than me. So you will know if, if they're open to the idea or no. And when you talk to your family about something like this, don't talk to them all together. You have to win some people from your family to your side before you talk to your dad. So maybe you talk to your mom, talk to your sister. If they're supportive, maybe you can bring it to the attention of your father. But if you go to the family and hold them up, <clears throat> listen up everybody, I'm going to marry this guy from, from uh, Somalia or from Egypt, you know, everybody will be, you know, against you. So you have to win some people to your side. Uh, if some people are for it, some people are against it, then inshallah you can talk to the imam, maybe he will try to convince the family or someone they respect in the family or in the community. But the guy or the sister has to be good enough to fight for, right? Because I don't want to uh, bore you with the miserable stories. Because if, if the guy is not practicing, there's nothing good about it. I talked to the father, and at least, at least he doesn't smoke, at least he doesn't drink. Well, the standards are going very low now, right? I mean, we shouldn't even talk about these things, right? So the person is practicing, mashallah, is a good Muslim. He's worth fighting for, but if the sucker doesn't pray, he doesn't fast in Ramadan, he doesn't go to the masjid, what are you doing, right? What is this? Can we turn off the camera? <laughs> 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 I told them to get